Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, I'm showing you how to make perfect chocolate buttercream frosting. So let's get started. All right. 113 times three is 339. Yes, that's easy. To get started, you'll need one and a half cups or 339 grams of unsalted room temperature butter. And I'm gonna talk to you about this for half a second. When we say room temperature, what we mean is I can use my finger, I'm putting my finger in, it goes in with ease. So soft, so buttery. It's not melting away and I'm not straining myself to press down, it just gives. Today, I'm using a stand mixer to make this. It makes everything really easy, I can walk away, don't have to pay attention, but you can use an electric hand mixer as well. Do not try this by hand, <laughs> that's not gonna be fun. I'm using a paddle attachment. You could use a whisk, but I'm gonna tell you the paddle attachment can give you better results. Is that true? Paddle or whisk, this is the question, and a lot of people ask me this. Paddle is a best practice in some ways. I'm gonna use a whisk today, and I'll tell you why. I want my butter to be fluffy, amazing, doubled in volume. And it'll just take a long time with the paddle to do that. This creates another problem though, but we'll fix it. So stay tuned. <laughs> We're gonna mix this up on medium to get it nice and creamed. And then after about a minute or two, I'm gonna move it onto high and mix it up for at least five minutes. So it's like very fluffy, very creamy, doubled in volume. I'm really whipping some air into it. And if you've ever made like a chocolate silk pie, which you should, it's a similar thing. You're just beating that butter until it is fluffier than a cloud. Oh my gosh. Look how beautiful that looks already. You know we're off to a good start. However, if I look into my magical bowl, I can see a lot of yellow bits. Look at this nonsense, this is important. Can you see that difference in color from the original butter that's on the edge of the bowl to this light and fluffy amazing cloud? It means we need to scrape the bowl down and give all the butter an equal chance to fluff up to its full potential. Doesn't that sound nice? A lot of time when you have a mediocre, like kind of dense buttercream, it's like, oh, this is so sweet, so dense. Is this grainy? <laughs> what happened? This butter wasn't mixed up enough, so this is one of the very most important things you can do. Okay, we have about two more minutes of mixing. That scrape down was important though. Mm, Taking the sights, it's beautiful. I'll be like grinning ear to ear this entire video. Um, this is amazing. And by the way, this is the same step you would do for vanilla buttercream. And I have to tell you, when people ask, oh my gosh, why is my vanilla buttercream so yellow? Look at the color change we had from the beginning of this to the end. Totally different color, it's really lightened up because we whipped so much air into it. That's great. Okay, now it's time for some other magical ingredients, including cocoa powder. By the way, my book is available for pre-order now. There's a link in the description box below and there are tons of amazing recipes I am so excited to share with you, including some amazing chocolate ones. Now we're gonna add the cocoa powder. I need half a cup or 50 grams of it but not all cocoa powder is created equal in a number of ways. Um, this is a nice natural cocoa powder, has not been Dutch processed. This, just for again, color, look at this. This is Dutch processed cocoa powder. It'll give you an ultra dark chocolatey, like baked good. We're making buttercream though, so you can use either or. It's really your personal preference. Dutch processed cocoa powder, makes this less acidic, it changes the color, and that does some amazing things when you bake things up. Gives you like fudgy, amazing brownies, for example. I want 50 grams of cocoa powder. Cocoa powder, while a powder, still has fat in it, so it tends to clump up. Actually, just for fun, <laughs> I'm gonna add some of the Dutch process too. It really, you can use either or here. And I think the Dutch process will give me a deeper, nicer color. In a lot of other kinds of chocolate buttercream, like if I'm making an Italian chocolate buttercream or a Swiss chocolate buttercream, I'll use actual chocolate and melt it and whip it in. This is an instance where cocoa powder really does the trick well. So if you wanted to add chocolate in, you definitely can. You could melt up half a cup of chocolate, add that in, add up even three quarters of a cup of chocolate and add that in. That's gonna be fine. They're both gonna taste very similar, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress about it. 
And honestly, like if you're spending the money, I would save that delicious chocolate for a chocolate mousse or some amazing cookies and just use the cocoa powder for this. Look at this, nothing but rocks in here. If you didn't sift this out, ah, you would have like a giant mouthful of cocoa nubs. Cocoa powder. I'm also adding in three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. We will be adding sugar to this. It is a frosting, but the salt really balances things out and it is to taste. So you can add in half a teaspoon now and the other quarter of a teaspoon later. I like a little hit of salt. It really gives me some contrast and balances everything out. It's time to mix things in well. You will always notice a streak of butter in your chocolate frosting. So you really wanna get the cocoa powder mixed in totally well. I'm gonna scrape this bowl down and be really thorough on that. Don't make a mess. <laughs> Please don't make a mess. I'm gonna let that work on low too for a while. I don't want any cocoa explosion. Also gonna wash my hands. By the way, if you have any chocolate buttercream questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be answering as many as I can and all questions are important because I want you to do the best job possible. Oh boy, <laughs> look at this stripey nonsense. I'm gonna increase speed just for a little bit. The cocoa powder worked in, there's not gonna be an explosion. We have two different views of the world. For me, it's chocolatey and amazing. For you, you see butter nonsense. So what we have to do now is scrape the bowl down, be really thorough. Even like this little bit of butter here, it's just something that's like a pet peeve for a lot of people. They don't wanna see streaks in their chocolate. If you're having a chocolate indulgence, chocolate it is. No streaks of plain butter. Okay. Let's just keep mixing this. It needs to be nice and homogenous. I'm also adding in an optional one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. In you go. It gives you a nice little flourish. This is all mixed in. It's chocolate throughout and it's time for your powdered sugar. Powdered sugar is like salt. You're adding it to taste. A lot of times you see a recipe and you're like, ah, ah, ah. That's too much powdered sugar. Unless you'll be okay, especially for an American buttercream like this. If you like things extra sweet, add more, it's fine. Adding more sugar is gonna give you a stiffer buttercream. So we're gonna use about six cups of powdered sugar and see where we end up. If you're using a fine piping tip, sift the powdered sugar out. I actually sifted this before I put it in my canister something that sparks joy for me and saves me time on camera from sifting and making a mess because it's never easy. Um, I'm gonna add the first cup in right now. Mm, made a mess. <laughs> add the first cup in right now. We're gonna mix this on low just to get it combined. And then we'll be adding in the sugar slowly as we go. If I'm ever making like a really complicated design like buttercream roses, there is a lot of powdered sugar in that part of the frosting. So if I'm making this for a cake and you wanna have chocolate roses or some kind of complex chocolate star situation, make your buttercream to taste, maybe on the less sweet side, reserve some and then add more powdered sugar to that to get a stiffer, more paste-like buttercream. Go low, you can give it one quick spurt just to knock it off of the whisk, just to get it out of the whisk. So several things are happening right now that I don't like, but we're gonna fix everything to make it perfect. One, this looks like a catastrophe in here. There's little boulders of chocolate at the bottom. There's powdered sugar on top, and it's like a lot of various things that aren't properly mixed. So just get everything out of this whisk. We're gonna scrape the bowl down and give it a little bit of a mix. This is getting a little thick, so we want it to be a silky, amazing buttercream. That's why we mixed the butter for so long, but to fix that, we're gonna add some cream or milk. And finally, earlier I said there was a downside to using a whisk. The plus side was, oh my gosh, that butter fluffed up amazingly. The downside is that I whipped too many large air bubbles into my frosting. So once this is all done, it'll look a little bit bubbly, which is not great for decorating. But we fix that with a special step at the very end, which you kind of have to do either way. So like even if you used a paddle, I would still use that last step. <laughs> like, ah, what is this? It looks like a tree, a chocolate tree. But anyone with some Virgo tendencies would see this and be like, <laughs> Virgo feelings. I'm gonna give this a little taste. 
Mmm. That's just about there. That's five cups. I'm just gonna add a, five, a half cup. Pop that in. This is a great amount of buttercream to make a three layer six inch cake or a two layer eight inch cake. You'll have plenty of buttercream left over to do little dollops or some extra things on the side. You can also frost 24 cupcakes really nicely and not be stingy with the frosting. If you're doing 48 cupcakes or a three layer nine inch cake, just double the recipe or make two batches. Mix on low. And now we're gonna start adding our cream in tablespoons. You want this to have like a silky, wonderful, like just beautiful consistency. This frosting is so easy, but you're gonna get like the perfect swoops, the perfectly smooth sides. It'll be amazing. I'm gonna eyeball it. I cannot find my tablespoon anywhere. So start off with like one to two tablespoons, drizzling it in slowly. When you add cream, it loosens it up. It gives you a silky texture, but if you add too much, your buttercream can break. There's just too much liquid in there, which is not great at all. It's really bad. So add it in slowly and just add as much as you need. This had an immediate effect. It went from looking a little bit grainy to lightening, and it's looking so much silkier and smooth now. You can add just like another one or two tablespoons in. Mmm. Ah, it looks really beautiful in the bowl. Come take a look. So you see that beautiful pull that whisk is making happen? Um, that is gorgeous. Look at this. That's what you want to see in the bowl. One final scrape down. Okay. Moving on high. That's how you clean the whisk off, if you ever wonder. <laughs> you have to move it on high, lift it up a little bit, but not too high, and use your hand to catch any drops. This buttercream is not done. You could definitely eat it, but we're gonna make it look the best. And we're doing that with our spatula, and the whole thing, oh my god, the spatula. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna give this a scrape down. Remember, I said we whipped a lot of air into here? This is what I don't like. So you can see, if I was smoothing my cake, I don't like those big air bubbles that are there, right? So we're gonna use a similar technique to when we make macaron, which is called macronage, where we work the air bubbles out with a spatula. So just use the spatula to press the buttercream down, and we're going to work some air bubbles out. And let me tell you, if you were using a paddle attachment, you would still have bubbles, just less of them, and I just don't think it would be as fluffy and amazing. You can definitely make this buttercream ahead of time. A lot of cakes have been made by John Cannell with buttercream that was made a few days earlier just because it's hard to have all the time to bake a cake, to make the buttercream, and to decorate it. So this is one of those blogger tricks I feel like nobody tells you just because that's how you get those beautiful swoops and cakes that look really nice. And I think it's an extra step that a lot of people are afraid to tell you about. Like, oh, I don't wanna make you do more work. But if you do this, you get really nice results. Anyways, if you're making this ahead of time, just pop a little lid on this, store it in the fridge, and then let it come back to room temperature slowly. And just like every other buttercream, you're gonna to have to give it a And then once it's room temperature, give it a whip to help restore the consistency with the paddle attachment. And this step is always gonna come in handy. Look at the difference now. This is a silky smooth, no big bubbles. It looks like chocolate mousse and it's gonna be perfect to pipe with. In fact, I'm gonna show you how it looks right now. Now I'm using my favorite tips to pipe some easy, beautiful cupcakes with this luscious frosting. If you're using an 846 tip, start in the middle and then work your way out to the very edge of the cupcake, turn it around and create a little cone of beauty. So amazing. Oh, I love it. If you like this recipe, check out my Easy Cake playlist. Hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and I'll see you in the next video.